Guess what? So keep looking at you. The difference between a line and a zone might not sound like much, but believe me, it can make a difference in identifying potential trades. I'm Chris, and I've been trading for years. Zones are a core part of my trading strategy, and I wish I learned to use them sooner. When you first identify the support or resistance level of a particular market, you might draw a line on a chart, but this doesn't allow for the natural market fluctuations and it makes you more prone to a fake out in the market. A fake out is where the market looks like it's going in a particular direction or changing trend. So the market looks like it's gonna be moving to the upside, looks like it's gonna go higher, but then it reverses and it doesn't do that. Let's take a look at some examples. If we look at the chart here, which is the German 40, it's the DAX, it's a daily chart. You can see that when it was used as a support, the market pretty much stopped on a dime. It stopped at that level to the pip or to the point, and the market then moved higher. So we had it here, the market stopped there and moved higher. We had it again here and here, okay? But what actually happened once we broke below and then it turned into resistance? What you can see in this example here is the market poked its head above the level, okay? And it actually gave you a fake out. So it might have been a trigger point or you know an idea that the market might potentially be moving higher now because we've broken back above that resistance level. But what actually happened in theory was it was a fake out. Now, how do you move away from getting faked out from the market? Now, what you can do is draw a zone. So if I just quickly flick between two images here on the chart on the capital.com platform, you'll see that if you actually drew a zone on here instead, then you might have been you know, less likely to get faked out because you're allowing for the market to breathe. You're allowing for the market to naturally fluctuate. So if you look here, that is just one support level in the market, okay? Now if I transition that into a zone, you can see that the picture comes a little bit clearer. A zone is literally just two levels in the market and you can draw a box, okay? And what you'll find here is this level here, that's the exact same level, if I go back to the first one, it's the exact same level as here. So where you would have got faked out here, transition into a zone, oh look, we haven't actually broken above that resistance yet. Okay, so the market potentially is not moving higher yet until we break above that barrier. So you could have avoided yourself a trade there if you used a zone instead of a level. Okay, so let's look at a few more examples of that and hopefully you can get a better understanding of how zones allow the market to breathe, allow for those natural market fluctuations and make you less prone to a fake out. So this example here is on gold. And again, it's the daily chart. And this is a previous low in the market. So there's your support level, okay? We had another test here, and then the market broke below. And then you can see that once we try to test it as resistance, it becomes messy. So the market broke above, oh look, okay, potentially we could be moving higher now, okay? Because the market has broken above the resistance. But what happens is the market actually goes up, you get that fake out again, and then it starts to roll over lower. Now look what happens when you use a zone. Once you use a zone, that fake out disappears. You allow for the market to naturally fluctuate. So if, if someone's gonna ask it, what, how do I draw these zones? What levels do I take? You can use wicks and candle closes, okay? So I use that wick there on the bottom, which is a bit clearer here, that wick there. And then if I draw an imaginary line here on these candle closes, once I transition that into a zone, the market becomes a lot more clearer for me to take potential trades from. So let's look at one more example of that. Now this is the US dollar index. So this shows you the price of the US dollar, okay? Now, when you initially look at this chart, it does look a little bit confusing, okay? Now we've got a little bit of a resistance here, break below, more resistance, not so much there. Now we break above, then becomes support. And it's a bit wishy-washy, okay? So if I was to look at this chart now, with just the singular line on there, I'm not too sure what potential trade I would take. Now what happens if I transition that into a zone? What happens if I find those lows of the wicks and the candle closes of the bodies? Well, now the whole picture becomes a lot clearer. Now I know where we, where we stand in the market. Because now this is a resistance zone or a support zone. 
as we are above the market now. Okay, so if we go from left to right, resistance, the market moved lower, we couldn't break above that resistance zone. So the market moved lower, okay? And then we came back into it here, the market moved lower. And then once we did break above that resistance zone, so that ceiling, what does that ceiling become? It becomes your floor, okay? It becomes your support. So now this is your support zone. And we had multiple tests around this region here, and then the market pushed higher. And you can see this theme carry out throughout the rest of the chart. So hopefully now you can see how a line can be misleading, but a zone can lead to a more informed trading decision. Now we know different ways we can draw these zones, but how do we trade from them? Join me in the next lesson where we look at candle closes and retests, which are different ways to identify potential trades. For more courses and guides to help you be more educated on your trading journey, head to our education hub at capital.com.